Hi, and welcome to a Draft House Diary for Thursday, February 15th, 2024, when I went to the Alamo Draft House at Sloan's Lake to see the zone of interest. But I didn't see the zone of interest. I had tickets to see the zone of interest at the 10 p.m. show. And when I got there, I discovered this was going to be a sensory friendly screening. Now, sensory friendly screenings are a terrific thing that the Alamo does. I think they're wonderful. They are screenings in which the house lights are not brought down quite all the way, in which the sound is a little bit reduced, in which, in general, they make the movies a little less overwhelming and a little more accessible to those with certain kinds of sensory processing issues. It's great that they offer this, but it's not the way I tend to prefer to see movies. And it's not how I wanted to see this particular movie with its Oscar nominations. I wanted to see it in a dark, immersive movie theater. And I should have known this when I bought my ticket, because they do say in the app when there's a sensory-friendly screening, along with things like kid-friendly screenings, something else they do sometimes. But in the past, I have encountered times when if there's one sensory-friendly screening of a film, all of the other screenings that day of that film are also marked as sensory friendly, even when they're not. And I tend to see that and I call the theater and confirm this 930 show or this 10 p.m. show. Is this a sensory friendly screening? And they'll say, oh, no, that's an issue with the app. The 11 a.m. screening was sensory friendly, but the, the 10 p.m. is a standard screening. Great. In this one, I saw the same thing. Every screening for the day was marked as a sensory-friendly screening, so I didn't call ahead. I figured it must be the same issue I've encountered before. Something odd was going on, though, because when I got there, I asked, and they weren't sure, and eventually I took my seat in the theater for the zone of interest and asked the server, and she went to check, and it turned out that she said that for some technical reason, they couldn't do any non-sensory friendly screenings of the zone of interest that day. So yeah, every screening of the zone of interest that day was a sensory friendly screening. I'm not quite sure what those technical reasons were, um, but regardless, that's the kind of screening it was. But the Alamo staff at Sloan's Lake, they're always very responsive. They're always great. I went and spoke to the fellow at the, uh, at the ticket counter. He was very happy to exchange my ticket for another. Uh, there was another 10 p.m. screening, so I saw Amelie, a movie that I've seen before, but I've never seen on a big screen. I knew I had enjoyed it before, so I was happy to see it again. Amelie is directed by Jean-Pierre Genet and stars Audrey Tateau, and it's a bizarre little fable of 1990s France. It's about Amelie, who is a young woman with a very peculiar upbringing that has resulted in a a strange way of relating to the world, a combination of, of distance and close observation, deep caring about people around her, and but sometimes almost, an almost mime-like silence or reserve. And having drifted through most of her young adulthood, a happy accident sets her on a course in which she becomes kind of a guardian angel or a spirit of good fortune, figuring out what thing is going to bring joy into someone's life and taking strange and secret steps to bring that about, to bring this joy. And sometimes this also involves bringing clever little torments to bad people who deserve it. And this eventually leads Amelie to seek and to find a romance that promises to bring joy to her own life. The story and the acting in this movie are all kind of off-kilter and compelling. And in some ways, I think of this director's style as kind of an opposite of Wes Anderson. They both have these quirky, unlikely, and very funny views of the world. But whereas in a Wes Anderson movie, everything is very studied and planned and very clearly and meticulously, all the elements are put in place exactly as they're wanted to be. But in Amelie, there's this sense that everything has just come together almost by accident to create exactly the right scene or exactly the right frame. I know a lot of work goes into that, but in the end, on the screen, it's a less studied and it's an almost effortless way to achieve the same kind of otherworldly detail that we get from a Wes Anderson movie. So 
Uh, it's it's a movie that I, I enjoy watching. The story is fun, charming people on screen throughout. Uh, but it's also a fascinating thing to watch visually. The pre-show was not one I think was specifically made for this movie, but I think it's one that they've put together that they tend to show in front of French language features. So this, by the way, was in French with English subtitles. So the pre-show was a lot of music videos, a lot of them poppy and romantic, some accordion pieces. It was, if not all music videos, very heavy on music videos. For dinner, I once again got the combination of the mozzarella sticks appetizer and a salad. That makes for a pretty good dinner because it is fun and tasty with those mozzarella sticks and the salad lightens it all up and gives you variety. Regarding food, in the printed menu, they still haven't added any bonus features like they did back in January of 2023 when they phased out the holiday bonus features. Uh, so there's nothing like that now in 2024, but they do occasionally have separate menus of bonus features. In February, they've got a few bonus features on this nifty little heart-shaped menu, specifically for Valentine's Day. And as I mentioned, as far as the staff, even with the mix-up regarding the screening type, the staff was very informative, very friendly, very helpful, always good customer service there. So all in all, it started out kind of strange, but it was a good trip to the movies. Well, thank you for watching this Draft House Diary. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, go ahead and click that like button down below, and you can click subscribe if you want to see more Draft House Diaries. I will be back with more soon, and in the meantime, enjoy your movies, and when you do, stay till the end of the credits.